And a battled lawmaker arrested again. The dramatic threat Stephen Brooks is saying to the I team that has many concerns. And rallying for change, Southern Nevadans call to action to curb violence. And three million miles without a crash. The record a Nevada truck driver is taking to heart and the advice he has for you to make sure you are just as safe on the road. Now, Nevada's first choice for news. This is 8 News Now at 6. And thanks for joining us. Tomorrow, President Obama is set to deliver his State of the Union address. You can expect one of his top priorities to be the topic of gun violence. Today, both sides of the controversial issue rallied in front of Congressman Joe Heck's office and took action to get their opinions heard in Washington. 8 News Now reporter Cassandra Garcia has more to make sure that there are just basic barriers in place. Members of Progress Now Nevada say enough is enough when it comes to gun violence. It's something that impacts all of us. The group is made up of people like Ava Gutierrez, a mother of a school teacher. After seeing tragedies like the one at Sandy Hook unfold, she says she supports President Obama's common sense plan. It includes closing loopholes when selling and transferring guns, universal background checks, and banning military-style guns. I don't see any reason why a hunter should have a rifle that's an assault weapon that's used in war. A deer does not have to be killed 50 times. Gutierrez did more than demonstrate. She filed a legislation opinion card urging Congressman Heck to take their side to Washington. Pro-gun supporters also took the same action. Ron Brown is a gun owner and says weapons have played a major role in his life. People that say guns are bad are wrong. Guns save people. You ask the police, you ask the Army, you ask the Marines, guns have saved my life. Like Ron, Paul McAllister says the president's plan doesn't explain how guns will be taken out of the hands of criminals. He says the plan would leave good citizens at a disadvantage. You disarm everybody and only the law abiding are going to obey those laws. Though both sides don't agree on much, they do agree the current system is broken and hope their opinion can result in a fair compromise. Cassandra Garcia, 8 News Now. Congressman Heck told us through a statement that he will keep the thoughts and concerns expressed today in mind as the debate continues. Heck says he supports background checks and prioritizing resources to deal with mental health issues. But he says he will not support measures that infringe on the Second Amendment. A former congresswoman's push for stronger gun control laws is taking to the airwaves in Las Vegas. You'll soon start seeing ads from Gabrielle Gifford's political action committee urging Congress to take stiff action to prevent gun violence. The ad is calling for universal background checks for all gun buyers. Giffords is recovering from being shot in the head at point blank range a couple of years ago at a meet and greet event in Tucson. She recently testified on Capitol Hill. Giffords will be at the Capitol tomorrow for President Obama's State of the Union address where gun control is expected to have prominent mention. The president will talk about ways Congress can help curb gun violence and issue new proposals to limit assault rifle sales. The uh, State of the Union will start at 6 o'clock. We'll have a special edition of 8 News Now following at 7.30. Assemblyman Stephen Brooks is in trouble with the law yet again. This weekend, the assemblyman was arrested after a domestic dispute involving his wife. Police say Brooks tried to fight with police officers while reaching for an officer's gun. Brooks' wife told police he pulled her by the hair and pushed her face against the kitchen counter hard enough to cut her bottom lip. The I-team spoke to Brooks today. He claims police have attacked him, and if they do it again, he says he'll shoot back. In January, Brooks was arrested for threatening to harm Assembly Speaker Marilyn Kirkpatrick. State lawmakers say this weekend's arrest won't weigh into their decision about whether Brooks can remain in office. However, the I-Team Steve Sebelius says Brooks' time as an assemblyman could be coming to an end. Yeah, there was a brief moment when it seemed like he might be able yeah. uh, to survive uh, this crisis. The witnesses who allegedly heard him threaten Assembly Speaker Marilyn Kirkpatrick had changed their stories, and the law under which he was charged doesn't really apply. But after yet another arrest this weekend, Brooks is probably done with politics. Brooks was arrested Sunday after a struggle with police who were called to investigate that domestic violence incident. He allegedly fought with the cops and loudly told them he was a state assemblyman, but probably not for long. 
Although the assembly has never expelled a member in state history, Brooks is a likely candidate to be the first one. No rules exist as to what kind of behavior rises to the level that justifies expulsion, but Brooks has provided plenty of reasons. He's been committed to a mental health facility for several days after police were called to a report of him handling a sword. He's given increasingly odd interviews and exhibited erratic behavior. Last week in Carson City, he invited me and two other journalists to his office for an interview, but changed his mind in the time it took him to ride an elevator up two floors. And Sunday's wrestling match with the police officer is probably the final straw. Now, the lawmakers say they won't consider the criminal allegations against Brooks. It would be almost impossible not to. It takes mm -hmm. a two-thirds vote to expel a member from the assembly, but Brooks doesn't seem to have much support among his colleagues. Most are tired of the media spectacle that he's become. But there are serious allegations against him and charges that bring discredit to the entire assembly. And in the end, that's what will probably cost Brooks his seat. If this happens and they vote against him, does he have any appeal? Uh, he doesn't really have an appeal because the assembly has constitutional authority to discipline its members up to and including expulsion. Right now as we speak, there's a committee meeting, a select committee on the assembly that's going to determine the rules for how that committee moves forward and what report they make to the full assembly before they make this final decision. Okay, thanks Steve. Thanks. Meantime, a Clark County District Court judge will face a public reprimand for keeping irregular court hours during a 2010 trial. An I-team investigation found Judge Valerie Vega forced a jury to deliberate overnight in a trial because she had vacation scheduled the next day. A disciplinary panel and Judge Vega agreed to a public reprimand. Vega says she takes full responsibility for the 2010 trial and the way she handled it. She said it was a learning experience and one that, quote, will never be repeated, unquote. Vega also recessed proceedings early six times during the trial to attend her daughter's high school soccer games. Oh, imagine driving an 80,000 pound semi truck eight hours a day. That's exactly what James Jackpot Sutphin has been doing for the last 30 years. And what's incredible is he's never been in an accident. Ted Florendo live at Craig and Losey where Sutphin is getting an award from his company for being accident free all those years. Ted, that's a pretty amazing driving record. That's right, David. It really is. And get this, he's driven a whopping three million miles in a semi like this one without even a fender bender. Three million miles is equivalent to driving 120 times around the world. Now, we can learn a lot from guys like James Sutphin, who says all he really does is just follow the rules of the road. Set an example. You could call him the king of the road. It's a pretty diverse run. You Jackpot, as his fellow truckers call him, has been driving semis nearly half his life. I started driving around South Bend, Indiana. They're driving a local trash truck, picking up <laughs> dumpsters and all that. Sutphin has spent many of those years confined to this semi cab eight hours or more a day. With three million miles log, he's never been in one accident. What's his secret? Probably there's a modicum of skill and probably there's some good luck mixed in there with it. Luck and brains. Sutphin says he always obeys every rule he learned in truck driving school, like checking your mirrors. I look in the right mirror once in a while, but the left mirror and you gotta you know what's going on around you, you know. And rule number one, make sure to leave enough space between that car in front of you. We have had some really close calls over the years. So we've always seen that there's one thing that a lot of cars don't do is give them the respect. Nevada Highway Patrol Trooper Lloyd Hickson says truckers have a hard job, most of the time doing defensive driving, avoiding us. There's going to be cars that'll be, you know, too close to the front, cutting them off, you know, maybe, you know, thinking that they have enough time to stop by being in front of them. I'd like to congratulate you for the outstanding achievement of 27 years and 3 million miles of accident-free driving. NHP and Sutphin's trunking company rewarded him for his perfect driving record. Hopefully I'm just the first one in a long line of them through Conway here. But for Jackpot, it's back on the road. As for that untarnished record, he aims to keep it that way. Now we asked Sutphin what his advice is for motorists like you and I, and he says just be aware, check your mirrors, don't speed to your destination, and do not talk on your cell phone, even with a Bluetooth. Stay focused on the task at hand. Some good advice. Reporting live at Craig and Losey, Ted Florendo. 8 News Now. All right, Ted. Getting the entire family involved in education. The success a new take on education is having, the school that's working at best, and why these schools are seeing the most growth in the state. 
Most of us like to have a choice in big decisions. That's especially true for parents when it comes to education. At the Bay of Northwest Valley Community broke ground on a new 12-acre charter school on Sky Point Drive. It's going to be called Somerset Academy. Sheree Harvin shares the unbelievable growth they've had recently. It's really amazing. 1,100 students are already enrolled. The school hasn't even opened their doors. And get this, 600 more are on the waiting list. Somerset Academy has opened three schools in just two years with even greater things to come. Right, everybody look right, up here. right now all you can see is dirt, but in six months this wide open lot will be home to Somerset Academy Sky Point campus. But 20 minutes across town is the Charter School Centennial Parkway location. We went to see just what sets the school apart. According to Haley Hendricks, it's things like there's after school clubs like you can learn how to sew, you can play lacrosse. Or in Wyatt Oakley's <laughs> case. You're going to be an actor, huh? Mm -hmm. Teachers foster his dreams of acting in Hollywood. Give me your best fake cry. Come on. You're on the spot. <laughs> All tears and jokes aside, Principal Gail Jefferson says two things have expanded the charter school's growth. First, teachers who cater the curriculum to students' learning. A lot of um, grouping children and taking them to their next level. Somerset Academy also requires 30 hours of what's called family involvement or volunteer work. I'm actually here every week, once uh, once a week. Sergeant Kenneth Paradis is a mechanic stationed at Nellis Air Force Base, but his first title is dad. It's actually important for uh, for uh, for my kids. Um, the school it needs all the help, so I figure a couple hours a week is not that bad. An investment more parents are making, paving a different path for kids to achieve their dreams. Aren't they just absolutely amazing? And that's not all. A high school is actually in the works for Somerset in 2013 or 2014, but this school really mirrors what's happening in Clark County. 3,000 more kids enrolled in charter schools from 2011 to 2012. That's a 64% increase. State. All right. Thanks. Well, taking a stance on high-tech criminals. The efforts underway to crack down on the thieves trying to steal from you. Plus, victims have advice for people who think identity theft can't happen to them. This portion of 8 News Now is brought to you by Fantastic Indoor Swap Meet. You're watching 8 News Now at 6 with Dave Carvassier and Paula Francis. The news of Southern Nevada is now. The state attorney general is looking at ways to better prosecute cyber crimes. Nevada has one of the highest cyber crime rates in the nation with identity theft being the most reported. 8 News Now reporter Brian Brennan looked into a bill that could help protect uh, your personal information. Dave, I know you do online banking, online mm -hmm. shopping, don't we all? Everyone does it and there's a lot of very important information we have on our laptops and on our smartphones. Senate Bill 24 would authorize the Attorney General to investigate or prosecute anyone taking advantage of those technologies. You punch in your credit or social security number and a thief on the other side goes on a shopping spree. You have to prove that it wasn't you, but in the meantime, you're responsible for whatever is showing on your credit or taxes. So you're going to be responsible and it can cost a lot of money. A technological crime is defined as any crime having to do with data or information from any kind of device like a computer or a phone. If you haven't experienced it yourself, you probably know someone who has. A girl that used to work with me, they actually uh, took her, I mean, her social security, her life completely because then she say they bought a car in her name. Um, they destroy, completely destroy her. During each regular session of the legislature. Senate Bill 25 was introduced to the Government Affairs Committee Monday. It would give the Attorney General more power to fight cyber criminals. According to the Crime Complaint Center, 130 per 100,000 Nevada residents complained they'd been the victims of Internet crimes, the third highest rate in the country. Normally I do it uh, through my bank. I use because there is more security. If I do it uh, through the company, I make sure that I know the company. In 2011, about $6 million in losses were attributed to Internet crimes, on average of about $178 per resident, the 15th highest in the nation. They take weeks and days, and I mean, she tried really hard, but it's not very easy to prove that it's not you.
The bill was heard without discussion. The next step will be a vote by the committee day. So needed. All right. Thanks, yeah. Brian.